Hey y'all, welcome back to this week's episode of AMA Friday with Amy Miller recruiting in yoga pants. All right, so this is our part two um, of our little kind of mini layoff series here. So for those who may have not seen last week's video, I started a conversation about layoffs and for job seekers who've been impacted by a layoff, just some, some things to think about as you're writing those social media posts or plotting out your, your next move, thinking about, you know, where do I go from here? Um, layoffs suck. I mean, there's no, there's no other way to say it. They're just, they're painful for all involved and especially for those impacted. And I know they're also, frankly, terrifying for the long-term unemployed or people who are still in, you know, trying to recover from a previous layoff. So it's just like kind of adding to that, that pool of people that I might be competing with. And so it's scary stuff. So I get it. So I talked a little bit about that last week. You can go ahead and check out that video. I'll link it up above. And uh, this week, as promised, I'm going to dig in a little bit to the recruiter point of view when it comes to addressing candidates who've been laid off and why there seems to be this insane push. <laughs> you see it on LinkedIn all the time. You want attention from recruiters on LinkedIn? Post on LinkedIn that your company just restructured. You, you will have more recruiters in your comment section talking about, oh, my team's hiring. You should send people my way and I'd love to talk to you. Uh, uh, there's a method to our madness, I promise. Okay, so a couple of things happen in a recruiter's mind when we see those layoff notices. Okay, now I want to be clear, as always, your personal mileage may vary. I'm sure there's a recruiter watching going, I don't think that at all. Oh, I'm sure you don't. Okay. <laughs> I mean, this is not intended to be, you know, one size fits all. Everybody thinks the same way because of course we don't. But just things that I've seen over the years and kind of nuances I've picked up, you know, having been through some of these cycles multiple times, this is kind of where things go. All right. So our thought process when we see someone laid off or we see a company announcement or, or something like that. Our, our mind goes two places. Number one, there are going to be people actively on the market. Layoffs are usually a bit of a surprise. Even when the company's not doing great or even when, you know, you're starting to kind of see maybe some recession signs like you, most of us still generally try to kind of hold out hope that it won't be us or that we're going to rebound and our company leaders are usually saying all the positive things and and so we're we're not we're not always ready for it we're not always expecting it right so a recruiter knows for the most part that when someone has gotten that layoff notice they were probably caught off guard which means you may not have been seriously looking before, which means you may not have 20 interviews lined up, which means that you may be very, very interested in hearing from someone like me. That's actually, let, let me say the quiet part out loud here, okay? Let me just, I just had an idea, I just had a light bulb moment. Recruiters are going to go where they're wanted if they're smart. Now, I, I know there are recruiters out there who, you know, seem to think that if you don't drag somebody kicking and screaming from their employer that they're not good. And that's not true. But anyway, I feel like I've talked about that before on the channel. For the most part, recruiters want to be liked. <laughs> and we want to be welcomed in your inbox. And if you've been laid off, you're probably open to talking to us, right? So so there's that part of it that, that's like, oh, this is like some quick low-hanging fruit I can very quickly pick and maybe get in front of my manager. And if I'm fast enough and beat all the other recruiters, then I can make a placement and get on with my life. So that's kind of one thought process. The second, and this is often the, the, the tricky part, especially for my long-term unemployed, is the second part is, okay, this is somebody who was using these skills yesterday. This is someone who is actually performing the function 
that I might ask them to do in my current role. This is somebody who has that relevant up-to-date skill set, probably, possibly, right? So again, all, all these other variables that could exist there, but that's often the challenge when we're looking at somebody who's been out of work for two years versus someone who's been out of work for two hours is unfortunately the two hour person was just writing code yesterday and we're not sure about the two year person, right? So now my personal philosophy, I definitely think that we should still, you know, focus on qualified people, start with applicants, like y'all know my, my drill, you know, how I, how I kind of view this, but I'm just trying to give you the broader kind of general recruiting point of view. Absolutely. Lots of variables there, lots of recruiters with lots of different opinions on this. So please don't take this as like the, the written gospel. <laughs> it's just, it's just a theory. Okay. <laughs> so please, please don't shoot the messenger. Um, but that is something that we kind of think about, right? It's like, oh, this person was just doing this job. Now they're available. Let me jump on this. Let me see if I can, you know, get get some traction here or get this person talking to my company before somebody else picks them up. So that's how we look at that. The other thing that we think about is the people who were not laid off. We often find that a company does a 10% reduction in force, for example, and let's say they laid off 10% of their accountants. So they still have 90 accountants, right? 10 of them are gone. They still have 90. Obviously, they're still doing the book. So they need those accountants. They're probably not going to lay them off. But how do you think those accountants are feeling right now? Even if you survived the layoff, you might be concerned like, okay, is just is this just the first big one? Is there going to be an aftershock? Am I next? And so you may be more receptive, even though you're still currently employed, you may be more receptive to hearing from me because your company has gone through this thing and you might be a little loose in socket going, eh, for the right opportunity, I just might make a change because I want to make that decision. I don't want to wait till they make the decision for me. That's the thought process there, right? So again, this is now potentially a prospective candidate who's literally doing the job today, who has the up-to-date skills, we probably presume, and who, because of these circumstances, might be more interested in hearing from me. So again, I, I really do, this is why I start with applicants, right? I say that all the time. I want to go where I'm invited. I, I want to try to connect with people and talk to people who actually want to hear from me, but also people who may be qualified for the specific role and possess the specific skills that my hiring manager wants me to find. So that's kind of the thought process there, right? Uh, we also can get a lot of great industry intel. Okay, I've been in those conversations multiple times with many, many companies under many, many employers, where one of the things that we'll do is actually reach out to executive leadership at a company who goes through layoffs. And there's often a, a, a you know, just a kind of off the record discussion about, okay, well, who's great? And who do you think? And, and do you have folks you're trying to retain? Or is there, you know, and so we try to get some of this intel and kind of do a little bit of talent mapping and kind of figure out, you know, where the players are and where the industry is going. Like there's so much great insight that can be drawn from some of these things and talking to leadership and talking to people who managed some of these great people who were impacted and we can sometimes make a quick case for, you know, maybe sometimes there's even like, um, I've, I've been a part of like acquisitions, you know, where we've kind of said, hey, that company is struggling. They laid off a bunch of people. There's a hundred of them left. Let's buy the team. Like let's purchase this organization and fold them into our organization. And then usually there's more layoffs, not that they're in the big company anyway. Uh, so, you know, you kind of see these interesting things unfold and that's where I think the, the focus from the recruiting perspective, where we kind of immediately jump on these posts or we immediately kind of, you know, again, I, I can't shake the, the image of the, the shark circling, you know, cause it can be gross. If we're not, if we're not remembering that there are genuine 
human emotions and pain being felt and just just grieving that needs to happen, like then we're doing it wrong. So I, I'm I'm not suggesting that recruiters should not, you know, reach out to impacted folks or that there's not value, you know, to be gained by talking with those execs or talking with with people, you know, who've recently separated from a company. There certainly is, but we have to do it with empathy and we have to do it with again always having at the forefront that our job is to bring qualified, available and interested talent. That does not mean we are limited to folks who've been laid off. They are one potential pipeline. We should still do the same due diligence and give the same you know, opportunity to the long-term unemployed, to our direct applicants, and of course, to people who are happily employed. I mean, they all matter. And, you know, of course, each recruiter kind of has to, to decide for themselves how they want to approach those different populations. But I think it's important to focus on the number one goal, which is to find the right people at the right time for the right position. So that's my, my uh, well, 12 cents <laughs> on that, I guess. Um, so hopefully that helps. I know it can feel a little shady and can feel just, you know, disingenuous sometimes. And for some recruiters, maybe it is. I You know, I don't know all of their inner workings or, you know, what, what they're, what they're going for. But, you know, I just keep in mind the recruiter's ultimate goal, and it's to fill jobs for their clients. That's it. If we can help job seekers along the way, if we can get somebody, you know, rescued from layoff land, it feels good. And and I, I, I've cried with people I've made offers to because they were just so relieved that, you know, the unemployment road was <laughs> finally over. But my first priority, like every other recruiter on the planet, whether they admit it or not, is to find the right people for the jobs that I'm responsible for. Sometimes a population of laid off people is where we find those individuals. All right. So I hope that helps. I hope that gave a little bit of clarity into kind of the thought process behind why recruiters do what we do. And if you do have questions on this, please drop them down below. Hopefully we'll get some input from other recruiters who may have different perspectives or can add more to this. Um, I think there's lots of ways to look at it. And I just want to get you the information so that you can act accordingly. So check out last week's video about how to respond to a layoff situation as that job seeker or impacted person. And we will see you next week.